Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about what is nutrition. I've asked you a million questions already about nutrition and just assumed that you knew what it was, but now we'll finally get to see what it actually is and see the proper definition. Now I think it's important to look at the question of why we eat what we eat. And there's a lot of factors involved in that. You can see in this picture here that, and I'm not going to read all of them, but you can see just how much is involved. <clears throat> because we're such complicated animals, humans are complicated animals, we've got a lot of stuff involved that determines what we eat. For example, when I come into school, I have a habit of going to get a bowl of cereal in the morning when I sit down to do my lessons. And I don't really have a reason for it. I know in the beginning it was because I was hungry, but now it's just a habit and I just do it. So when you look at nutritional needs and you look at someone's nutrition, oftentimes that process does involve evaluating the habits and evol evaluating each different snack or item of food and, and why, why, actually critically looking at why we eat those things. Advertising is a big component in that. We're very able to be, um, we're, we're, we're very able to be convinced that we need certain things, um, but convenience, time, cost, I mean, it's, there's just a ton involved in affecting what we eat. Nutrition is more than just food. Uh, nutrition is the study of how the nutrients and compounds in food nourish you, how they help you function, and how they affect your health. I want us to separate nutrition from food science because food science is more the study of the physical and chemical makeup of foods. So we will look at the chemical makeup of foods in this class, but more importantly, nutrition is about how those nutrients affect you and affect your health. Now there are six nutrients in the foods we eat, or the, that should be in the foods we eat. Carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, and minerals, and water. <laughs> six, okay? You need all six of these things to survive a healthy lifestyle, okay? Carbohydrates and fats and proteins are things that you probably learned about in biology. Similarly, water, you probably had a unit on that in biology too, but um, vitamins and minerals are also important components of a healthy diet, and those are also nutrients. The cool thing is that the foods we eat, um, when we eat living things like broccoli or chicken, we get those nutrients in certain proportions. Um, here's the proportion of the human body. The human body is about 60% water, 20% fat, 17% protein, and then we've got minerals and vitamins and carbohydrates of our own. But when we eat chicken, we get very similar proportions of those six nutrients and also broccoli, we get um, kind of similar proportions. But as you see, every food is not exactly the same. Every food has different combinations and different amounts of the vitamins and minerals and proteins and all those nutrients. So that's why a balanced diet includes a variety of foods and not just a single food so that you can make sure to get everything that you need and in the right proportions. So of those six nutrients, three of them provide us energy. And the three that provide us energy are carbohydrates, protein, and fats. All nutrients help us grow and maintain and function properly as animals. But the three, the carbs, proteins, and fats, those are the ones that provide us calories. Now the number of calories we get from each one of those things, um, carbohydrates, if we have a gram of carbohydrates, that is four calories. If we have a gram of fat, that's nine calories. And if we have a gram of protein, that's four calories. So protein and carbs have similar amounts of calories. Fats have over double that number of calories. Now when you're talking about calories, it's important to discuss that you need calories to maintain weight. You need calories um, in, in proper proportions and also to gain weight. So individuals can estimate the number of calories they need based on their age, their sex, their activity level, their medical conditions. And so as a nutritionist, for example, if that were gonna be your career goal, as a nutritionist, you would be looking at all of these components of a person and see what their 
goal should be in terms of calories. Calories are not the only thing that your body needs food for. So I want you to keep that in mind. Yes, your body needs food for calories, but it's not the only thing that you get from it. Carbohydrates supply sugar called glucose. And in biology, you learned this already, that your cells use glucose as a major energy source to fuel your body. And I have two foods up here that are very high in carbohydrates, um, corn and pasta. Then for fats, I have olive oil and lard. Fats are another major fuel source. You do need fats, and it's not just for fuel. You need them to, you need them to cushion your organs and to prevent um, damage to your organs, to your nerves. Your, um, they insulate your nerves. Um, they also act as insulation under your skin to maintain body temperature. So a no-fat diet would be extremely unhealthy and actually very dangerous um, for a person. Fats are not evil, I guess is my point. Proteins, um, they can be used for energy. As you saw, they have four calories per gram. Proteins can be used as energy, but they are better used to maintain your tissues, your muscles and organs. And you do need protein to make most of your enzymes and your hormones. And you need protein for a healthy immune system because your antibodies are made of protein. There are these two words that you'll see a lot, um, both in popular culture, but also in science, organic and inorganic. There are two definitions of organic. The one definition just means, does it contain the element of carbon? And organic applies to carbohydrates, fats, proteins, and vitamins. Those four are considered organic. Inorganic, that means that they don't contain carbon. Examples of those are minerals and water. For example, sodium chloride, salt. You need salt to function, um, but you, you can't get calories from it. If you were starving, licking a salt lick is not gonna help you. Um, salt provides different nutritional benefits for us. Now we get minerals from the food we eat and we get water from our food also. Now you can calculate the amount of energy food provides by using the weight in grams of proteins, carbs, and fats in your food. And we're gonna do an example of this. I've got this Gertrude Hawk bar that are, I may or may not have been snacking on in recent history, and I blacked out the calories. So what I want us to do is figure out how many calories are in this bar and confirm it by actually looking at how many calories there are. So we have in this bar on our nutrition facts label, 15 grams of fat. I'm gonna bring up my calculator here. Hopefully you remember that fats are nine calories per gram. So if we have 15 grams of fat, that'd be 15 times nine, 135 calories just from fat. And I'm gonna write that down. 135 calories from fat. And the way we figured that out was we took the number of grams of fat and multiplied it by nine because you get nine calories for every gram. Now let's look at the carbohydrates. In terms of carbs, which we said again are like sugars, okay, this is a very high sugar item. This is a huge chocolate bar. So 27 grams of sugar, let's see how many calories that should be. Try to remember, how many calories do you get from every gram of carbs? You get four, okay? So I'm gonna take 27 times four, 108 calories from carbohydrates. And then finally, protein. Protein was three grams, and you probably remember that each protein does deliver four calories per gram, so three times four, and I don't need a calculator for that. Three times four is 12 calories from protein. So there we are. We have 135 plus 108 plus 12, 255 calories in this chocolate bar. And let's see how right we are. Can you see? Whoop. There we go. There it is, 250. So they're off by five. They probably figured, why bother? 
maybe they wanted to be the round number. Um, I don't know if they're allowed to round, actually. I should look into that. But um, so you can see here that you don't really need that calories number. It is nice that they calculated it for us, but you can calculate it on your own. And actually, that's going to be our next assignment is for you to go find some nutrition facts labels and then calculate and confirm the number of calories. So again, fats provide nine calories per gram. Carbohydrates provide four and then proteins provide four calories per gram. I hope you have a wonderful day. It was good to see you guys, and I will see you on the flip side.